It is a beautiful day uh, for a funeral. August 21st, 1931 in Central Valley, Utah. The fourth of five children, Dad was raised a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Following high school at South Sabir High, Dad attended the University of Utah, then Brigham Young University studying zoology. While at BYU, he met Mom of Sacramento, California. Both graduated from BYU and were married that same year on October 24th, 1959. After 23 months of marriage, their first child, Stephen, was born. That day, Dad was activated in the Berlin crisis, and shortly thereafter, Dad, Mom, and Steve moved to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. At the conclusion of the deployment, they returned to Bountiful, Utah, where their remaining three children were born, Melanie, Marianne, and Colin. After 11 years in Bountiful, the family of six moved to Centerville, Utah, where Dad and Mom lived for the next 44 years. Dad was best known for his love of God, family, and country. His work ethic and his studious nature were also renowned. Dad taught his family the importance of being faithful to God and true to his commandments. He served a faithful three-year mission as a young man in Uruguay, Paraguay. Later in life, he and Mom served three missions together in Adamondayaman, Montevideo, Uruguay, and Sydney, Australia. Dad spent 36 years in the U.S. Army Reserves, including time on active duty in the Korean conflict and the Berlin crisis. He rose to the rank of Major General, overseeing reserve officers and operations in seven western states. 
He grew up on a farm and was his dad's partner in the fields, herding livestock and milking the cows. The days were long, but being equal to the responsibilities given him and working up a sweat were two of dad's favorite things. Additionally, dad loved to read and learn. U.S. and world history and religious books were his favorites. Following this, the interment will be at the Centerville City Cemetery, and there will be military honors, and we would love to have all of you join us there. I've always been proud to be the daughter of Richard O. Christiansen. It's been said that a dad is his daughter's first love. The older I've become, the more I realize that my dad's love was more than just a physical protective armor around me. It was my father's love who taught me to love and value myself. I remember one difficult night when I was being an impossible young teenager and causing quite a ruckus at the family dinner table. My dad, quite strongly, excused me from the dinner table and followed me up the stairs to the laundry room. <laughs> As I continued to rant, probably about some perceived unfairness, my dad stopped me and said nine words that would forever change my life. He said, Melanie, don't you know how much I love you? It was with as much intensity as I ever heard him say anything. And it stopped me in my tracks. I had heard that he loved me before. But for some reason, that night, that moment, it was crystal clear to me that even with my weaknesses and my mistakes, that I was loved and I was valuable. There was the night that one of my dates came to pick me up. And he sat out in his car and honked the horn. <laughs> you know, being a teenager and just wanting to be, you know, fit in and more than happy to run outside and begin our day together. But my dad was not having any of that. And though I was dying inside at the moment, he very calmly walked outside to the car and let my date know that when he came to pick me up for a date, he would knock on the door. We actually still went on a few dates after that, which is quite surprising <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it. <laughs> but my dad defended my honor. He valued me, even though I didn't value myself at the time. And I will be forever grateful. I love you, Dad. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairie. To the oceans, white with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. I am Colin Christiansen, the youngest of Richard and Marsh's children. Um, while sometimes lonely, though, during those times in high school after my siblings left the nest, I look back at those times with great fondness, uh, being able to have my parents all to myself, though truthfully I may not have truly appreciated it at the time. For example, I was able to travel with Dad on some of his army trips, including a trip to Fort Collins in Colorado Springs, where Dad made sure to include golf as part of the packed itinerary. Why was this especially memorable for me, you might ask? 
Well, it's because Dad hated golf. <laughs> Going so far as to query many times, saying, golf is a sport? All you do is chase around a dumb white ball across a green pasture with too short of grass that would be much better utilized feeding cattle. <laughs> Does it sound like Dad? Dad only went golfing because he loved me, and he knew that I enjoyed it. I remember church campouts um, where we would go, and Dad had to leave early the next morning to go play Army. Um, and so a helicopter would come pick him up into an open space filled nearby. And I was repeatedly asked the question, what's it like to be the general's son? And I would always answer like, he's just my dad. I don't know what the big deal is, he's just dad. But that's how he was to me. In essence, dad showed his love for me by taking interests in things that I enjoyed. Dad, I love you, I'll miss you terribly. I'm forever grateful for you for loving me the way that I needed to be loved. And then having the patience over a lifetime to allow me to learn how to love you back. Friends and family, thank you for being here. I hope you have felt of our love, and I'm certain that you have felt of the Savior's love as well. This last weekend, uh, we had the opportunity to participate in one way or another in General Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. One of the talks given was given by Sister Jones, the primary general president, and during her talk she made one short statement that has stuck with me. She said the following, Eternity is the wrong thing to be wrong about. As I've thought about that, what I think she meant was, number one, it's really important to understand that there is an eternity, that life continues after this. And secondly, it's really important to understand the importance of preparing for eternity. It is this aspect of eternity that I'd like to talk about, the preparing for it. But before I do, I'd like to share one quick experience that occurred just a few days ago that will help you understand that Dad believed deeply in eternity, in the concept of life after death. Before I share this experience with you, please understand, at the end of his life, Dad's Alzheimer's caused him to really not be able to communicate much of anything that made any sense at all. Two days before Dad's passing, uh, the four of us, the four siblings, as we always would so often, we gathered at Creekside. And I happened to be standing next to Dad's bed, looking down at Dad as he laid there on his back. His eyes were just ever so slightly open. He had had about two bites of food to eat in the, pre in the previous three days. He was weak, and we were just trying to keep him comfortable. And as I looked down at him, I instinctively said, Dad, Mom, Marcia, will be here to get you very soon. Immediately, Dad broke into a grin from ear to ear, and he chuckled. In a brief moment, he was given the miracle of understanding. And at that, in that same moment, he communicated volumes regarding his belief in a life after this. He knows that eternity is real. And he communicated that with a simple grin and a chuckle just a few days ago. Let me talk a little bit about enduring patiently. Dad was a highly capable and competent man and a man who knew how to love unconditionally. However, he began to lose his hearing. Well, that's fine. Hearing aids can fix that. He then began to lose his eyesight, macular degeneration set in. He became legally blind. He could no longer read. And then Alzheimer's hit, and his mind gave up. Through it all, Dad was patient and never became bitter. He was understanding that certain things in this life may happen, that will require the very best of us in terms of patience. And he demonstrated to me that it can be done. In closing, let me simply sum summarize. 
dad believed in eternity and he prepared wisely and well for it. There is a simple formula that will allow each one of us to prepare for that same eternity. Number one, make the necessary covenants. Number two, strive diligently to keep them repenting as often as necessary. And number three, endure faithfully, cheerfully, and patiently to the end. There is a glorious eternity awaiting us. Of that I testify. I love you, Dad. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thanks to your dad for his service. Yeah. <laughs> Smile, you do. Gracie, Gracie. It's kind of fitting that today, as Dick's spirit soars, there are a number of hang gliders that are paying tribute in the skies.
yeah, be what I'm filming. <laughs> What's on your mind, huh? I love my dad. I love him. Just finished divvying up all of the stuff. Life is often reduced down to a few trinkets and pictures at the end. Memories are the enduring thing.